A lot of times you guys ask me, why do I have so many knives? Well, the fact is that there's no one knife for every given scenario. And as a matter of fact, you know what? We're not going to do this here. Let's get this green screen out of the way. Let's go for a walk because we're going to talk about some stuff. So let's get going. So here at work, I don't need a knife, uh, but I carry a knife because, you know, that's what us knife guys do. So when I'm at work, I'm usually carrying something that's fun and enjoyable because a lot of times I'm going to mess with my knives to pass the time. So most of the time what I'm carrying here at work, even if you see stuff that I'm carrying on a pocket drop, a lot of times I'm carrying the Gara, the Beyond EDC Gara. And the reason I'm carrying it is it's a lot of fun. It's a nice little hawk bill, or if you want to call it a talon style blade, but it is a very, very nice little knife and it is comfortable to carry in pocket. It's not real heavy. It's done in VG1 steel, micarta. It's got a really nice deep carry pocket clip. Sometimes I'm carrying this, which is this Chavez 229. It's the production version of the Redencion. This is a very, very nice knife. It's very attractive. It doesn't weigh too much for as big as it is. And it's got a beautiful grind on this 20 CV blade. I'm sorry, M390 blade that has got a hollow then into a flat. And it is ridiculously sharp, but it's easy to carry even with this big garish pocket clip that some people just don't like. I also most times will have this in my pocket sometime during the week at work. It is the Riat Horizon D. It's one of the first high-end production knives I ever bought. And I'm really, really still very happy with it. I still do think it's probably the best production knife I have ever purchased. It's a great, great knife. Also M390 and titanium. And it is one of the most fun and just gleefully snappy knives that I own. Listen to that action. There you go. And something that has made its way into my pockets a lot now that I have it is this Clinch River by Rosecraft Blades. It is a great little traditional folding knife that is more into the modern realm, but still just a great, great traditional knife. But there is something that is always either in my pocket, on my belt, or in my backpack, which is where it usually winds up living. And that would be the Case Hobo. Now, the Case Hobo is a folding set of silverware. And the reason that I'm going to tell you I have this every time is I am a dummy. And when given the chance, without fail, I will forget my silverware. So you wind up with an entire set of silverware. You have a fork, a spoon, and a knife, which is not just like a butter knife, but an actual knife that you can cut things with. If you need to cut a piece of steak, a piece of meat, and you forgot your silverware, it's a great little option to have. So I know it feels like you guys are off kelter, but that's just because of the angle of the camera and where I'm sitting. But yeah, that's what's in my pockets typically when I go to work. So outside of work, there's a lot of different things that I'm gonna be carrying. So let's take a walk over to my buddy Tino's house and we'll take a walk around his pool in the neighborhood and we'll see what I carry in those scenarios. So let's get going. So <laughs> now that we've walked over here, the next thing you wanna take into consideration is if you're just walking around the neighborhood. So one of the things that I always keep in mind is like, what am I gonna carry if I'm wearing shorts, well, it's definitely not going to be something like this Kodiak, which is a great, great knife. This is the PMP Kodiak. It's done in M390 and titanium, but it's almost a pound. This can pull your pants down. You don't want something like that. If you're in shorts, you may want something that's more along the lines of this mini Nightshade by Vosteed Knives. It's a great little light knife. It's really comfortable. It's not giving up much when you talk about cutting and capabilities. Uh, if you're wearing jeans, you could probably get away with a couple of other knives that really would be great everyday carry knife options, like the Mili 2, the Military 2 by Spyderco. It's done in, this one's in crew wear, and Micarta, it's a great, great knife. I absolutely love this knife. It's probably one of my favorite new purchases. Another knife that you want to consider uh, is maybe a fixed blade option like this La Sancion that is a great, great little everyday carry fixed blade. And you can put a clip on the sheath or probably my knife of the year pick right here, the Amphibian by Microtech Knives. Great, great knives. All these knives are options. But the other thing you want to consider when you're out and about and you're just walking around your neighborhood is what is everyone else thinking? Whether it's legal for you to carry some of these knives, like a fixed blade or these things, those might not be such a good idea. Is it gonna be off-putting to people? Is it really gonna bother them? Is it gonna be something that maybe 
they find a little over the top, it could be. And it might be something that even, like I said, even though it's legal, might not be something you're wanting to carry. So just walking around the neighborhood, maybe not, maybe not carry a fixed blade the size of like a cold steel um, OSS or something like that. They have their place, but walking around a neighborhood in town, not so much, especially if you're downtown. Downtown in a city might be someplace where you don't really want to carry something as big and aggressive looking. That little one I showed you, probably a really good option, that Vosti Nightshade. So let's go ahead and we're gonna walk over to my buddy Tino's house and see what I would carry around the pool. So if you're out hanging around a pool, if you're at the beach or something like that, one of the things that you want to think about is what kind of knife you're going to carry. Yeah, everybody needs a beach knife, no different than a shower knife or a pool knife. Um, and there's a lot of thought that has to go into that so that you don't screw up. One of the things I like to recommend is something that does not have handles that are going to draw damp. Something like this. This is the Corgi Pup by Vosteed. It's done in 14C28N. It's not a steel that's really gonna rust easily and it's impregnable handles. Another thing you wanna think about is what is the mechanism on the knife? Even though this is aluminum and M390 or 20CV being an equivalent, you don't want that because it's all enclosed. You're gonna get water inside it. It's gonna be a problem. It could rust. There's little springs and things like that. You don't want a complex mechanism getting wet at the beach, especially something like this, you can get sand in it. Another knife that would be a really good choice would be this Mica by CJRB. It's done in aluminum. It's a button lock, so it's easy to clean. And it's an ARRPM9 steel, which is a very good steel for something like this because it doesn't rust really easy. It's high chromium content, low carbon. Things you don't want are micarta handles. They're gonna get wet, they're gonna stay wet. Could cause your pocket clip screws to rust, things like that, your pocket clip may rust because those are typically in a different steel than the blade. And another thing, no uh, machine steels. You don't want like machine tool steels. You don't want tool steels. Tool steels are gonna rust. They're usually high carbon. They're lower on the spectrum when it comes to rust resistance and things like that. And so those are the things that I would say you wanna take with you if you're going to the beach. Now, we're gonna have you guys go ahead and uh, swim on to the next segment. But with all those other scenarios, there are times when a folding knife just isn't gonna be the right tool for the job. And uh, we're heading into one of those scenarios. So let's go ahead. Oh, hey, Runny, Runny Babbit. Little bunny rabbit up there. So uh, we're currently climbing up the side of uh, Mount, San, Mount San Miguel at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. We're gonna get some beautiful shots and we're gonna talk about some knives you may be carrying for camping, hiking, and the lot. Here we are. This is where I wanted to bring you guys because I wanted to talk about knives that aren't necessarily pocket knives and how they can be used and why it's important to know that you might want these. And we've got some heavy fog rolling and so hopefully it doesn't obscure the view too much. But a folding knife is a very, very good tool. It's an awesome tool to have, but it's not the end all be all. When it comes down to it, you really want to know what you're gonna take. And in an area where I'm at right now, where it's known for having coyotes and mountain lions and, and other animals, including rattlesnakes, perfect scenario to bring along my cold steel OSS. And the OSS is a great knife for this because it is a big enough knife that you can use it to fend off a larger animal, but it's also nimble enough, comfortable enough to use that you could carry it and not have a problem carrying it and using it. And it's easy to carry. I'm not a big fan of the Securex sheath, but hey, you know, nothing is perfect. This is an awesome office, awesome knife for the scenario we're in right now. We're on the only one up here. There's no one else up here. I didn't even see any other cars at the bottom of the mountain when I came up. So, you know, the likelihood of me being able to holler for help if somebody was, if there was a mountain lion or something up here. Great knife if you're just coming up for a day. If you know you're coming up here and you don't want to carry something as big as that, the Lawn Humphrey Custom Tucson 
another awesome, awesome knife in a scenario such as this. It's a great little outdoors knife. It's a great little fixed blade, really robust, super, super sharp, easy to use, easy to handle. And if you were gonna be like on a day camp, you could use this as your small little camp knife just for the day. Now, if you're gonna be out here for more than a day, yeah, I brought a lot of knives to show you guys. If you've been out here for more than a day or like an overnight stay, this might be something you wanna bring. This is the Grizzly by Work Tough Gear. Now, this is an incredible knife. We've talked about it before. I actually brought this up here for a day of testing further up the mountain on the other side of the valley, and it performs incredibly good. You could use it as a hatchet. You could use it as a camp knife. You can use it for just about anything you're gonna use in a campsite, and this would be something that you only need the one tool for your entire trip. So this is a great, great knife. And then there's another knife that is just an all around badass in the realm of outdoor knives. It's further down in the bag. And that's the Buck 119 Special. A lot like the Lawn Humphrey Custom. It's a knife that just does a lot of all around really good tasks. It's a great, great knife, really robust, comfortable in hand. You could do a lot of cutting without getting fatigued because it does have these big, thick handles on it where you can really wrap around it and not have to fatigue your muscles. Holds a really, really good edge. It's got a nice, comfortable sheath. So these are all knives that I recommend in scenarios like we're in right now, where we're on the side of a mountain. You might be by yourself. You might be all alone. I think that's all the knives I brought. We're gonna stay up here for a little bit and see if we can't catch some good views, hey birds, of downtown from a distance once this fog clears. So there's a lot of work for three minutes of content, guys. I'll see you as we walk into the next segment. Hey guys, Future Mike here. Uh, I'm gonna apologize, we did not get any beautiful views. Uh, I was at about 1100 feet uh, when I filmed that and uh, it stayed foggy for i was up there for a good hour and a half two hours trying to get like uh some time lapse and see if i can get videos i'll go up a different time and we'll do that because we've got the new camera now so back to the video <sighs> and we've made it back to the house it's been a fun day well for you a fun day for me a fun several days but i have to say i do still carry knives here at the house even when i'm relaxing in the backyard on a beautiful day like this just guys Look at this. I'm going to get a shot of this for you so you guys can see what I'm looking at. It is absolutely gorgeous to just sit here, but I still do carry knives. And when I'm here at the house, there's a lot of times that uh, I'm just I'm in the studio, either goofing off because that's where my PlayStation 5 is. That's where my TV is. That's where all the stuff that I do for recreation pretty much is. And that's where I'm filming. So I'm probably going to be in there. But just because I'm filming a specific knife doesn't necessarily mean that that knife is in my pocket. There's a lot of times that this finds its way in my pocket. This is the Yan Knives EMW, and the reason I carry it when I'm out here and doing stuff like that is I've already reviewed the knife. I don't, I don't have to carry it. I enjoy carrying it. It's a great little knife, titanium, M390 steel, uh, micarta. It's got two blades. It is one of the best front flippers out there. You've got a Tonto that's really, really well done. And then you have a Bushido or trailing point style that is absolutely gorgeous and it's a very comfortable knife because it's got a nice width to it no pocket clip it comes with a pocket slip that you carry it and speaking of the pocket slip because currently in that pocket slip is my exo gravity knife and this is a knife that i'm not going to carry around town and do things with it's simply something that's fun and i enjoy carrying it so when i'm here a lot like at work at work i'm going to carry something that's more practical that I, I can film a short about and things like that and that you guys would enjoy. Here, I carry the things that I really, really like, like this. This is that Microtech Amphibian, my knife of the year. This spends more time in its po in my pocket than any other knife right now. It really does, it's right up there, and I know you guys have seen it a bunch of times, with the Military 2, the Mili 2. Those two are typically in my pocket nine times out of 10. They are both great, great knives. So. You can see, like, I'm, I'm showing you right now, like, most of the time that I spend in the studio is just me goofing off. I'm in a pair of shorts or something, so I might carry some of the little mini knives that we saw earlier in the video and things like that. But I just thought that this would be a fun way of just showing why I have so many knives. There's just so many different scenarios for me to have a knife uh, and not necessarily a folding knife. So if you guys enjoyed it, hopefully you did. I, I, I had fun doing it. It took me several days to put this video together. Something happened in the interim of making this video we're gonna talk about in a future video. I talk about it in a live feed, I believe. 
I did. I did. I already did that live feed. I was really upset and really tired. And I was in the hospital yesterday. So we're going to we're just going to take today and rest. But if you guys like the videos, please drop a like, share, subscribe down below. There's a bunch of affiliate links, even affiliate link for this new camera. I'm going to do a video about this camera because it really is incredible. And it's going to do a lot of heavy lifting coming for moving forward on the channel. Um, and we're going to do a lot of stuff like this if I can, um, as, as much as I can travel things, things like that. I am going to take you guys to another place in San Diego that is the oldest brick and mortar knife store in California. So uh, yeah, guys, you know what to do. Check out the links down below. Think about joining a membership. Now that I'm unemployed, it would be great. I'm only laid off right now temporarily. We'll see what happens. Um, and uh, yeah, with all of that, guys, I love you all. Take it easy. And I'll see you in the next video. Let's get out of here. Get it, buddy. You can get it. Chunk, go get it. Go get it. Jump in. Jump in. Goofball, just jump in, Chunk. lion when he's all wet like that. He does. Chunk, you making friends with the little ones? You making friends with the little puppies? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. It's okay. See? You're a good boy. Just like with little kids, you're really gentle. So here's the thing, for a pool knife, everybody needs a pool knife. And a pool knife, the thought process that goes into a pool knife has to be about the same as what goes into a shower knife. You want a knife that's not going to rust. Please, dog, get out of the way. You want a knife that's not gonna rust. So there's some option you've got. If you're looking for a folding knife, you can go with something like this. Uh, it's gonna have materials in the handle that are not going to uh, allow it to stay damp. You're not going to have to worry about like something that's going to draw moisture and hold more. Why the f fuck? So one of the categories of knives that we very rarely talk about are pool and shower knives, also beach knives. Uh, there's a lot of options available out there. Spyderco makes a really, really good one. Um, and it is the H1 Salt. Sorry, I've got a dog trying to drown us both. <laughs> it's the H1 Salt. Now, it's meant as a diving knife. So you can carry this if you're going diving, if you're going swimming, it's gonna work. It's not gonna rust as much. Uh, they've, they've had this line of knives around for a while and uh, they've been really popular. Another knife, another option, <laughs> it's hard to do this in a pool. Another option that you have available to you is something 
uh, along the lines of just a cheap knife that you don't care about, something you don't care if it rusts. Like this one. This is a, what is this, Viper Tech? It's a VTech. It's a VTech. It's a, it's Aus 6 steel. Aus 6 steel, and uh, you know, you really don't have to worry about it. It's got a plastic sheath. It's not going to rust too much, and if it does, you can always just get rid of it, because it's not a very good knife. And then there's some other options. Uh, you could always get something like this. It is the Corgi Pup. It's got impregnable handles. They're made out of uh, they're made out of, uh, geez, I gotta start over. So one of the things that doesn't get looked at is what knife are you going to carry in the pool or at the beach or in the shower, a shower knife. That's an important thought process. Like what are you looking for in a shower knife? Well, all of those categories pretty much fall into the same realm. So you're looking for something that isn't going to be something that's got a complex mechanism. You don't want a switch blade or something like that. Probably you're wanting to go with something like this. Just a cheap knife that you really don't care about. It's got a plastic sheath. You don't have to worry about its Zytel handles. Uh, it's, it's probably not going to rust. And if it does rust, you're not going to really worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, other option that you've got available is something that Spyderco makes from their salt series is this h1 salt diving knife and so you've got a diving knife it's meant for diving my dog is currently drinking a bunch of pool water and so it's not going to rust it's got impregnable handles and it's something that's meant for the purpose of what you're looking for so this is an option there's other options out there sometimes you don't have to break the bank or get something specific you don't need a specific dive knife uh really my dog's getting ready to jump in the pool here um, you don't need a specific dive knife. You know what I mean? You've, you've got other options. Now, there is one knife. There is a couple. To, there's a type of knife. There's a, a specific material that is the king of the pool and shower knife. And that is the SM100 Stinger. And I say that because this knife can't rust because it's not made out of steel. We've talked about SM100 on the channel a bunch of times. This is a material that has no steel in it. So therefore, there's no, there's no uh, ferrous materials in it. So it can't oxidize the same as other materials. It can't rust. So this is the perfect shower and pocket knife for taking in the pool and in the shower, especially if you have a big dog like this that's gonna... <laughs> so there we go. Pool, beach, and shower knives. So why don't you guys swim along to the next segment? This is the best B-roll ever. Chunk, Chunk, are you, are, you, are you saving the chair? Can I have it? Chunk, let go. Let go. <laughs> Chunk, let go. Let go. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Good boy. Thanks for saving the chair. You're tired, huh? That's a big swim. Tired? <laughs> Good boy. Okay, I won't throw it anymore. Do you want me to pull it out? <laughs> I'm afraid he's gonna wear himself out. Look how tired he is. Okay, stop. That's good. No, no, no. Chunky, it's not a toy, bud. It's not a toy. It's not a toy. You gotta put it back. You, you gotta leave it be? No. No. Good boy. I need to get him a pool knife. <laughs> oh, well, Southern California day. Just hanging out. So this is a little bit of B-roll. I'm going to get this video all put together. I'm probably going to put the B-roll up for the members first. So you guys, the members, you'll get to see this first. And then after that, the B-roll will all be in with everything else. So <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoy it. Chuck, you're a goofball. Hey, give me the ball. Throw me the ball. Matt, throw me the ball.
Hey, I did not ever play. I don't play cards. I played video games. I played golf, but the ball doesn't move. Golf's not a sport. Chunk. You want to get it? Go get the ball. Ooh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> so, guys, this is that new camera. We're doing a lot of cool stuff with it. So, it, it's uh. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think this is going to add a bit of a dimension to the channel we didn't have before. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I know it screws the microphones up. <laughs> what a good boy. You going to ride on that? Are you tired? No, leave it, chump. Leave it. Leave the chair be. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Your little doggy's gonna swim some more? Alright. You wanna swim some more, little doggy? <laughs> she goes, I don't know about that. Oh, you're gonna swim some more? Let me give you the full run. You didn't like the water so much? Yeah, yeah. So just look you don't know? You're not like Chunk. Chunk, Chunk likes the water. And then you come well, she's not running away from the pool. No. You can do Chuck's like, I'll teach you. I'll teach you. Good girl, bye bye.